This is the okay, best day of my life, Leonardo Drew. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised I survived the first one. So Leonardo Drew, here we are again, part two of the interview. Would you like to say hello to the camera? <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. So tell us a little bit about where we are right now. Explain to the viewers at Madison home. Madison Square Park um, was asked to do an installation here in the park uh, maybe about f almost four years ago, actually. So this is four years in the making, uh, creating this piece. It started out as a was possibly going to be like a gigantic sculpture that was going to be in the center of the park. Uh, kind of an exploding thing that would have probably decapitated someone. So I said, okay, let's take this thing to the ground. <laughs> and so it became this carpet monstrosity. Yeah. So at the start, it was less interactive. It was like more of a big sculpture. It was going to be the traditional sculpture. I mean, they're up against, you know, the framing of the city. I mean, you got the Empire State Building there. You got the Flatiron Building there. Yeah. But this framing in itself, uh, with something that I kind of felt, you know, like uh, uh, needed to, we need to, I need to sort of take a fresh look at uh, what was possible. So coming in to do a bombastic sculpture, mm. uh, gigantic sculpture, uh, didn't make sense, you know, for me. Yeah. And I thought that, like, rather than challenge the uh, cityscape, it was probably, you know, more about, you know, actually figuring out how to sort of realize this space and have it actually be interactive. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's interesting mm. you mentioned challenging it because that reminds me of the Empire State Building. It uh, looks like uh, the Empire State, uh, like they look like buildings. Is yeah. that what you had in mind? Well, actually, if they were probably you know placed in a, pl a place like India, it would be like a stupa. Huh? Uh, oh. You know, Los Angeles, it would probably take on the uh, you know the Watts Towers. Mm. So I think that they, you know this uh, very iconic shape uh, can sort of adjust its frequency to whatever its surroundings are. So can yeah. you take this mm. to like? You know, California, China, well, open Leonardo Drew parks all over the world. Well, That'd be so cool. <laughs> I mean, I think the very idea of that would be interesting, but um, it's going to go actually next to uh, North Carolina and Raleigh, mm -hmm. uh, to the uh, museum there, to their sculpture garden, and who knows where else. So all those places are possibilities, but it's so uh, built gonna to travel? travel. It's going to travel. These yeah. little things remind me of mm. spaghetti noodles, okay? And now my question is, mm -hmm. did you picture people were going to lay on them, sit on them when you designed it? Or oh, you just absolutely. thought it would be kind of fun? Like, no, 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 no. So, yeah, the idea of um, uh, having these undulations, uh, I mean, really was about rhythm and about tone. Uh, but in the end, you know, like uh, the idea of that people could actually sit on them and walk on them and be a part of them uh, was really, you know, and it became a part of the, the uh, overall composition. Mm -hmm. you know? Even the holes that are like, you know, you can see planted all throughout, yeah. you know, like where you can see the grass peeking through, yeah. was to invite the public in uh, to actually want to sort of be involved in walking on the piece. So did you want it to look like a skyline? Yeah, or did, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, you no, didn't... That was, okay. it, it, I mean, the working title in the studio was City in the Grass. Mm. So, uh, City in the Grass. City in the Grass, yes. City uh, in the Grass. Yeah, and now, yeah. why cannot we not climb on you that? You can climb. Order? You actually... It that, says do not climb no, right that, on that, that, that sign. That, the that, 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 that sign. That sign, in effect, <laughs> it, you know, is something that the park instigated. Um, I built these things to be climbed on. Okay. So uh, kids know this, they jump on it, they, you know, disregard the signs and they go right for the pieces. And I think that's, that's uh, So is that's the perfect. sign in a way part of the artwork? You're inviting <laughs> people to rebel against the status quo and I, say, jump I, I, on I, I, this I'm sculpture. a rebel. I'm, I'm a rebel yeah. and I, I made that way. But they have to protect themselves. <laughs> so, and putting that sign there, if someone, you know, falls um, or has some accident, uh, the sign is there for that reason. Oh, true, yeah. true. Mm -hmm. So then also talk a little bit about the pattern on these undulations, because you don't well, like color, Oh, uh, no, color has not, color has really, color no, no, no. <laughs> don't, why are you blushing? There's no, 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 color, no, no, color is definitely a, a new uh, additive to my vocabulary. Yes. Uh, started in uh, China uh, about four years ago. Yeah. When I was uh, uh, actually um, working with porcelain and glazing. Mm. And from that point, it was like, okay, as I was working on this, I was working on that. Yeah. So the two things started to come together. So the idea of having a city in the grass, this was supposed to be like this large undulating wooden yeah. flowing um, city yeah. made of wood. Yeah. And um, so I kind of said, This is the wave, said, and exactly, it's moving the city exactly. along. But the fact that it's kind of like a wooden carpet, you know, was the idea. And carpet kept coming up as a metaphor. Yeah. And, um, and the idea of color was interjected, you know, in my uh, studies in China. And inevitably, it sort of those two elements start to come together. The yeah. idea of the carpet and the uh, color that I was experiencing all sort of came together to sort of realize this piece. 
But the pattern mm -hmm. doesn't really look Chinese, though. No. I mean, no. there's color, but what about the pattern? Leonardo? The patterns were like, in, in effect, a vehicle. I mean, if we can talk about the politics of the uh, 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 of the Persian um, uh, rug and where we are in terms of, uh, of all that, but I think that in the end, for me, it was a sort of vehicle to realize the next iteration of self. Mm. You know, so I mean, having expand that built into that. Expand on that, Leonardo. What do you mean, iteration of self? Well, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sojourn. I mean, I, you know, as art, as in life. So I think that um, I don't separate the two things. Yes. Uh, art and life, you know, feed one another. Yes. And as I'm sort of creating, I'm also living. Yes. And those things should be, you know, you living know, you should your be. best life. Exactly. Well, I'm mean, interjecting, you know, what you're living into what you're creating. Mm. Yeah, mm. That's what it comes down mm. to. Mm -hmm. So tell us where you want to go next after this, because I saw your show well, and there was a lot of color there too, mm -hmm. which I loved. Mm -hmm. So where are you taking it next? I I almost thought like I saw a little Daffy Duck somewhere, you know, like I was seeing things. <laughs> Listen, I was these things are mirrors. Artwork. So if you're seeing yourself in the pieces, then no, that's I wasn't all good. Seeing myself. Yeah. I seen, uh, Daffy what? Duck. <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed to see Daffy Duck, but uh, um, I don't I don't title these things for that reason. I mean, they're mirrors. So you should be able to see whatever you're seeing. Mm. And I, you know, like uh, I never get in the way of actually the work. I mean, the, the work, the viewer, the, 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 the viewer should be complicit in, in completing the work. Yeah. I remember last time I was here, because this is my second interview with okay. you, we talked about like political things. Is there mm. any sort of, is, mm -hmm. are you trying to make any political message? No, no I, would, I, I, would, I, would, I would never even speak about that. But uh, those things, um, the, it, listen, the atmosphere, things that we're that are flowing through us right now, collectively, I, obviously, you know, these things are charged. I mean, art is going to be charged. Yes. But I'm course. not going to sort of put uh, uh, put that out there in terms of actually a signage. I'm yes. And tell you that that's what's going on. Yeah, because yeah. that's mm -hmm. the beauty of your work. Mm -hmm. Is you're mm -hmm. you don't there is no political meeting. You let mm -hmm. the viewer figure out what they want from their own thing. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's a magical experience. Mm -hmm. My idea here is like an adult could be a kid, a kid yeah, could be a kid. Everybody is living mm -hmm. their best life. Mm -hmm. Now, question. Do you sometimes come here and just see if anyone's hanging out here, spy on it a little bit, <laughs> see what's going on? Well, I mean, you got to know, like, the first first day was open to the public. I was curious to sort of see if the uh, kind of composition that I realized would actually pull in, people. you know, people. Yeah. I mean, I left these holes and these gigantic gaps to sort of, you know, have the, uh, uh, the viewer or the public actually find themselves literally in the work, pulled mm -hmm. in by the fact that there are these gigantic um, holes. And and it didn't take them. It took, took, didn't take long at all. They were. It became them. Uh, I mean, uh, looking yeah. at this park, mm -hmm. everybody's enjoying it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But mm -hmm. I mean, if some. So what do you want the initial when the viewer first sees it? What do you mm -hmm. want them to see? Do you want them to be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Or do you just want them to be curious and kind of in, entice them to see what it is and come closer? Well, all those things. I mean, you hit it. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, it should I be all. It should be head, yes. It should, it should be all those things <laughs> and more and then some. So. You know, so um, I mean, the overall experience for me, from my uh, perspective, is just um, you know taking in like the uh, experience. I mean, like uh, it's been beautiful. Yeah. You know, the very idea that your philosophy, uh, the idea that complicity and the idea that the viewer actually is uh, uh, you know should be a part of completing the work, that's a philosophy that's been sort of taken absolutely, absolutely yeah. uh, full on in this piece. And you know, I have the opportunity now to sort of like watch people. You know, they're sitting, their asses are on my piece, you know, so it's like... That's uh, a great feeling. Yeah, no, no, they're chilling. It's like they don't, you know, they don't know me, but they know me. You they know? do, that, and you know something? them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's such a nut. <laughs> so giving back to the community, mm, that doesn't mm. feel good at all? Come on. Yeah, well, it sure. feels good. Yeah, no, I, I mean, good. I mean, yeah, I mean, Bob's best, yeah, I, I, if I can, you know... It certainly looks like uh, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, butts are in action. Butts are in seats here. So. I mean, I know yeah. you think I'm a funny person, but I'm very proud of you. Oh, thank you, honey. I think this is amazing. Mm. I think this is the best work you've ever done. Because oh. I think Ma I also know Madison Square Park has had a mm. lot of different artists come through mm -hmm. and put different stuff together. But I think this is by far the best thing. Wow. Because your work is meant to be enjoyed. Wow. And people to interact I with it so and touch it, it and step on it, you know? God, you just made my day, honey. How does the audience here in mm -hmm. the park, the civilians, mm -hmm. how do they compare to the gallery people? Well, I mean, you got to know that, you know, people are, you know, conditioned in galleries, you know, they're there actually uh, with the whole history behind the whole system to sort of appreciate 
the white walls and your work there in the space. This is a whole different situation. I mean, people are, you know, like, uh, I'm, I'm actually invading their space. It becomes a part of the experience rather than sort of like be this sculpture that you have to walk around, sit around, but not interact with. That was definitely not, you know, I, I, I had to, that, was a, that became a part of my mantra as I was creating this, that I had to sort of make sure that, that uh, they, were, they involved themselves. So mm. that being said, I mean, this is a public that's not necessarily gonna find themselves in galleries or museums, yeah. but I've invaded their space. Yeah. So I need to sort of like, you know, to be, uh, to appreciate that and actually bring them in. Yeah, because the people who go to galleries mm. have an interest in art and mm. your work if they're going to see a Leonardo Drew show, mm. which everybody mm. should, by the way. <laughs> but like people who are here, they're stumbling upon your work, mm. probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a more wholesome thing because they're like, yeah. this is really cool. Mm. And then they look you up. Mm. And what if people start going to Leonardo Drew shows, visiting oh, you in yeah. museums? You have all these new fans. Well, that would be an interesting hustle, huh? Is it hollow on the inside, Leonardo? Well, actually, it's, 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 uh, it's an aluminum base. That's been um, laser. I had to draw out all these designs oh my. Um, because actually the uh, computer could not read uh, so like these rug patterns. So I had to literally draw out all this, and it was extremely painful. There were like over maybe 400 and something drawings that went into like creating this. That then had to be laser etched into an aluminum structure, which mm -hmm. is why this is able. So the machine sturdy. was going. Yeah, it's, a laser. it's a laser. It's a laser that cuts into the aluminum. With and then color. from there was colored with sand. Color was colored sand laid on top of that. So it was almost like a gigantic paint by number, Wait, so, so to speak. Wait, so the laser cuts the mm -hmm. drawing and then the sand is applied to color it. Exactly. Got it, coolio. Yeah. And yeah. what about these, I'm guessing? The, the towers? Yeah, yeah the they're, they're three different personalities. I, yeah, I, so mm -hmm. what about the different personalities of the three of them? Do you want me to tell you what I think? I'll tell what you what I think. What do you think? think. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. this is the cool, this is like suave. Not, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna give you too much of who I am. Like mm -hmm. I'm cool, calm, and collected, you know? Uh -huh. That one's like, a little bit angry. Something's uh, a little like, oh, turmoil. Uh, and then that one at the end is just like, I'm fun and happy party time. <laughs> well, the kids love that one. Yeah. And I knew, I thought that was going to be in the center. But mm -hmm. actually, based on the composition, it makes sense to have it back there. And the kids find it anyway. Yeah. Uh, they moved towards that one. It is the it is the favorite one for the kids. What were you mm -hmm. thinking when you chose the three different, because they're all the same. They're I attacked, I just said, I attacked it. So I was here and I put that there. It's, I mean, come on. Once I, when I designed these in the studio, it was like that. That is like a child's drawing of the Empire, yeah. Empire State Building. Like, these sort of cityscapes, yeah. these metroplexes, you know, they repeat themselves. They, you know, they, they and and then also there's a there, there's a there's a database that we're pulling from in our heads as artists. So yeah. of course, you know, like um, you know, when, once you start doing structures like this, it's gonna fall right in there. Look at that cityscape. Now I can show you like from an airplane. That's exactly what our city looks like, yeah. like that, yeah. from 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 way up high. Yeah. Yeah. That's you, a part of it. it. It should be allowed to disintegrate, um, uh, find its new self. So uh, parts falling off, all that is good stuff. I have to actually educate uh, the, uh, the uh, parks people to the idea that that is all allowable. Hey, do you suggest that people take parts? Yeah, they can do whatever they like. They can do whatever they like. What if you come back one day and the whole thing is gone? Well, I don't think. I mean, I don't think there'd be enough strong enough people to lift these things. I know these things, how heavy these things are. Well, what about if all the little wooden things are just that gone? Would, wouldn't that be something? It would be beautiful. I think we'll find this new self, and I'm waiting for that. You can see already there's a lot of things that have broken off, right? So once we turn, if we were to flip this upside down and allow all those parts to sort of hit the ground, we would have a whole other face on that, and I think it would be really interesting. Are you saying you condone theft, Leonardo Drew? Condone theft. Yes, theft from a public well, be, be, park? Well, being a, being a bad boy, a badass, I think that, uh, do your thing. Me, Leonardo yes. Drew, and I'm your best friend. <laughs> I'm his best friend. I'm Leonardo Drew's best friend. <laughs> oh, New York City, am I right? <laughs>